19-year-old Siobhan Randall was reported missing June 28, 2017 from an aunt's house in the 1300 block of South Ridge Drive in Lancaster. Her cousin, LaDoris Randall, received a call from an unknown person who said that he had Siobhan and that she would be harmed if LaTorres called police. The caller demanded that drugs be returned. An Amber Alert was issued and four persons of interest were named in her disappearance. Siobhan was found in a house in the 2200 block of East Keys Boulevard in Lancaster. Search for 13-year-old Siobhan Randall, who has now been missing for more than 24 hours. At this point, Ken and Gilman, as you can see behind me, family members gathered inside and outside of that home here to show support for uh, the loved ones who are there waiting for any kind of answer regarding any of this. This is the house where that young lady was last seen. At this point, this family not commenting about any of this at this point. We are heading into hour number 30, more than 24 hours now since a relative actually called Lancaster police about the disappearance of Siobhan Randall. Police know the family received a call from a male voice who said he had Siobhan with him. Police say he had actually made threats to hurt her. Since then, despite a released Amber Alert on yesterday and the description of a car that's possibly tied to a suspect, police today say there's been no change. You mentioned the FBI. Yes, they are involved. And residents who live near Siobhan's home told us today police are now knocking on their doors. I work from home, so I was just, I'm, I'm, I'm just working, um, so I didn't hear or see anything at all. Um, and it wasn't until, it wasn't until I have already left um, to go pick up my mom from work, and when the, uh, the Amber Alert went off, that's when I realized that, okay, that's what, that's, that's what, what has occurred from across the way. Police there and FBI are looking for these four people of interest in the investigation of missing child Siobhan Randall. Take a good look at these four faces again. They are considered people of interest. 13-year-old Siobhan has now been missing 36 hours. Her family says her captors have threatened to hurt her. They kidnapped her while she was babysitting a disabled relative. The abduction... Old Siobhan Randall, the kidnapped girl's body found in a boarded up Oak Cliff home. Thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Marisa Vedra. These developments coming overnight and raising many more questions for investigators today. First, we want to show you how we got to this point. Family members reported Siobhan missing on Wednesday. An Amber Alert was issued later that day. On Thursday, police released photos of four persons of interest in that case. Devante Owens was arrested Saturday on aggravated kidnapping charges. Two others on that list are now in police custody being questioned. Michael Titus's body was found in the Oak Cliff house along with Siobhan's. One name not on that list, Laquan Wilkerson of Dallas. He is now under arrest on aggravated kidnapping charges. News 8's David Goins joins us now live with the latest from police and that young victim's family. David. Yeah, Marie, as you alluded to, a lot of pieces moving in this investigation don't have all the answers at this point. Uh, but the family of one of those victims says this was fueled by robbery, drugs and money. And that innocent 13 year old girl, Siobhan Randall, was simply caught up in the middle of it. As you can see here uh, at this house where both the bodies were found, uh, people have been leaving a variety of items uh, as this memorial has grown throughout the afternoon. FBI and investigators spent most of the morning and the afternoon at this home on Keese near the intersection of uh, Sunnyvale, this abandoned home where they found both bodies. They came out here just before midnight on Saturday on specific information we don't know exactly from whom and located both these bodies. It is a conclusion uh, that the mother of Michael Titus, that 19-year-old male found inside here, uh, says she feared. She spoke to News 8 on Friday believing that his life was in danger after he'd sent his girlfriend text messages saying he feared that he might be killed. Angel Titus came out to the crime scene this afternoon where her son's body and that body of 13-year-old Siobhan Randall was found. I wanted my baby back and I wanted this little girl back and I did everything that I could, everything that I could. Angel Titus says her son was last seen with Devonte Owens as we looted off the top. He is one of the two people charged with aggravated kidnapping right now. However, no one has been charged yet with the death of 13 year old Siobhan Randall or uh
break in the case came this time last night. Since then, a memorial to Siobhan grows as we learn new information about those charged in this case and what police think happened. Four days of searching. Things that are unexplainable. Ended horrifically here. The whole thing doesn't make any sense to me. It is hard to make sense of a 13-year-old girl taken from her home and found dumped in no one's home. FBI detectives found Siobhan Randall in this boarded up house on Keese late Saturday. And one of the four men police originally were seeking when Randall disappeared on Wednesday, Michael Titus, was found dead too. They killed both of them. Mike was a victim too. Detectives are not saying how the two ended up here, but Titus's family admits the 19 year old was involved in drugs, but never would have been part of a kidnapping much less one of a child. That's why I, I wanted my baby good. back, and I wanted this little girl back, and I did everything that I could, everything that I could. Angel Titus told News 8 on Friday she believed her son's life was in danger after he sent his girlfriend text messages saying he feared he might be killed, information she shared with police. This ain't easy, man. This is so hard. This is the hardest thing ever. But allow for your grace and mercy to visit this broken family, this hurting family, we did not hear from Siobhan Randall's family on Sunday. Instead, mourners, many who'd never met the seventh grader, shared their grief. I remember getting an ambulance on my phone and I woke up out my sleep and saw it and it just hurt me. And for Dallas Councilman Dwayne Carraway, anger. She was simply a victim of some thugs that will not and refuse to go to work. Tonight, one little girl is dead, four are in custody, and there are... Handle, who police say was an innocent victim of a dispute over drugs. News 8's Marie Saavedra is live there tonight. Marie, a lot of raw emotion out there this evening. Absolutely, Jason. From Siobhan Randall's family, her classmates, and strangers alike. We talked to her friends tonight, and they said no matter what was ever going on in Siobhan's personal life, she always put a smile on their faces, which is why it is hard to find comfort now that she's gone. So we come seeking this place and asking you, God, to make this place holy ground. Yes. Fifty feet from the home where Siobhan Randall was found dead, her family's grief laid bare. In the name of Jesus. She meant a lot to us. And they took her from us. That baby didn't deserve that. Hundreds gathered with shared heartache for a 13-year-old whose life was taken from her and from her family. I want you to know that you took a child life that didn't do anything. She was innocent. She was real innocent. She didn't have nothing to do with nothing. She was the reason I always had a smell. And, and from her young friends. She was very important to me. And knowing that she died made me sad. Siobhan's seventh grade girlfriends try not to imagine her final days. Lancaster police and the FBI believe these are some of the people responsible. Two charged with kidnapping, two for drugs and one for robbery. We learned of a sixth arrest Monday, Desmond Jones, who led police to Siobhan's body and that of Michael Titus in this abandoned home. That house, others like that house, to come down. is coming down. The crowd heard Councilman Dwayne Carraway promise to demolish spaces that only serve as draws for crime. He knows what's best for me. This one now standing as the place where lives ended before they'd even begun. She's in heaven. She's in heaven. How and when Siobhan died is still a mystery, but there is an update on Michael Titus tonight. The Dallas County Medical Examiner has ruled his death a homicide. this hour. That's right, Russ. Dallas Code Compliance has just finished up boarding the windows on this house so people can't get inside, but you can see many more have stopped by outside, leaving flowers and balloon mourning Siobhan's senseless death. And we are learning more from the arrest warrant for one of the kidnapping suspects. Police believe they took Siobhan for ransom. Devontae Owens and Laquan Wilkerson sit in the Dallas County Jail this morning, charged with aggravated kidnapping. According to an arrest warrant for Owens, the kidnapping was payback for a drug robbery. A relative of Siobhan Randall told police her boyfriend stole a large amount of drugs last Monday. She says she then got a call from a man claiming he had Siobhan 
and that the suspects told her, quote, give us our expletive back or we are going to kill her. An anonymous informant also told the FBI that a man she knew as Trey told her, quote, a male stole his drugs from Motel 6 and he was going to kidnap a child to get his narcotics back. The FBI was able to confirm that Trey and Devontae Owens are the same person. This all corroborates what the family of Michael Titus told us yesterday, that this was retaliation and that Siobhan Randall was an innocent victim. Now, the two other people who were in persons of interest in this case are still in jail in Irving this morning. They were arrested on... We have no answers for why you guys are out here again. Frustration and concern. False rumors went flying today as the FBI returned to the Dallas home where the body of Siobhan Randall was found last month. Thank you for joining us. I'm Cynthia Isaguirre. John has the night off. Siobhan Randall was an innocent victim, kidnapped, held for ransom, then finally killed in a scheme involving drugs. She was only 13. This case has inspired community passion like few we've seen. News 8's Rebecca Lopez has new developments tonight. We just want to know what's going on. There were tense moments as a large crowd gathered outside the home where Siobhan Randall and Michael Titus were found. Residents eager to find out what was going on. Y'all doing y'all job, but our kids walk around here. Rumors swirled as people began going live on Facebook and falsely saying that there was a body found in the home. The Dallas District Attorney had to hold a news conference to calm the community. No body was found. Investigators were simply running a routine warrant to gather more evidence. They can trust us that we're going to vigorously and we're going to aggressively pursue any defendant, any perpetrator in any case in this office. The case of Siobhan Randall and Michael Titus brought national attention. Randall, who was only 13 years old, was kidnapped and held for ransom, then brutally murdered. Police say she was the innocent victim in a scheme involving money, robbery and drugs. This is somebody's kids and I don't have no kids for myself, but I can just imagine the family, what the family is going through. It's sad. It's sad. People in the community have been trespassing inside the abandoned home and posting on social media, so some questioned why authorities were still gathering evidence. The district attorney says it's common and will often go back to the crime scene several times to get what they need. collateral damage in a world of stolen drugs and retribution. But a turn in this case could come soon. Fox 4 Sean Rabb has new information tonight about the murder investigation. Right, Clarice, the Lancaster Police Chief tells me their investigation is nearing its end and charges could soon be filed in Siobhan Randall's murder along with Mike Titus. A murder so horrific, longtime Lancaster officers were shaken. A murder the public can't seem to shake. The flowers have faded, the balloons have lost their luster, but people still come to the house where Siobhan Randall was found dead, with questions about why no one's been charged with her murder. We just don't understand why it's taking so long for the police to react on it. A lot of people want to know why it seemingly is taking so long to charge someone with Siobhan Randall's murder. In this instance, we want to be with accuracy, not speed. Lancaster's police chief Samuel Urbanski says they're close to filing capital murder charges in Siobhan's and Mike Titus's killings. At this point, we're just kind of wrapping everything up and making sure we have a completed investigation prior to filing. Uh, the majority of the investigation is complete. It's just the filing that we're looking at. Again, we want to make sure we're accurate in our filing and that we, we file everything. Summer's heat couldn't keep Linda Marshall and Marvin Staten from coming to Oak Cliff, staring at the house where now even the teddy bears seem sad. I think when you bring someone, child, in, in, into your stuff like this, you deserve to get the max. The facts that we don't know yet, so disturbing, Lancaster police went through grief counseling. I took it personally. My daughter turns 13 next week. Uh, I attended the funeral of Siobhan. I feel like I knew Siobhan, everything her family said. <clears throat> so I personally took it to heart and I will never forget. Now, the house itself, a notepad for messages. Those who knew Siobhan and Mike and strangers 
drawn by what they cannot comprehend. Oh, it's so sad. It, it makes you oh, almost cry. She, she had to go. And I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. Court documents detail the chilling string, string of crimes leading to the kidnapping of 13-year-old Siobhan Randall, including how detectives tracked down the abandoned home where the body of her and another victim were found. Our Dan Haggerty outside the Lancaster Police Department to explain more about this case. These are the documents from multiple agencies here, Irving, Dallas County, the FBI. They explain this string of drug crimes and how a 13-year-old girl got caught in the middle of it all. The fate of 13-year-old Siobhan Randall may have been set at this Motel 6 in Lancaster. Nearly a week before they found her body in an abandoned Oak Cliff home. Last Monday, Kendall Perkins told police he and three other guys robbed La Portia Polly in room 116 and stole at least 22 pounds of marijuana. The pot allegedly belonged to Polly, Darius Fields, his cousin Devonte Owens, and Laquan Wilkerson, known in that circle as Owens' bodyguard. An arrest warrant for Owens says he went looking for the drugs and with Wilkerson's help, kidnapped Siobhan, then called the girl's cousin using her phone and said, give us the drugs back or we're going to kill her. That cousin is Perkins' girlfriend and the young girl's only connection to any of this. The documents show police used FBI informants and cell phone records to connect the dots, arresting Owens and Wilkerson for kidnapping on the 28th and Polly and Fields on drug and firearm charges at an Irving motel the next day. But none of them led police here. It was a sixth person of interest, Desmond Jones, unknown to the media until today. The warrant says he told police, let's take a drive. Then Jones began to shake when they drove toward the house, saying RIP to her and Mike T. Inside, detectives found Siobhan's body and Michael Titus, another suspect in the case. And the documents here do not detail Michael Titus's exact involvement, how deep it goes, and all of the things you just heard about. They do refer to him as a suspect at one point, though. We're hoping to learn more. 19-year-old Michael Titus over the weekend after first identifying him as a person of interest in Randall's disappearance. Court records describe a drug theft that led to Siobhan Randall's kidnapping for ransom. Relatives say Titus was expected to stand guard over the stash of drugs that was robbed. Yes, and he, and he didn't. So because he wasn't there at the moment and they told him to stay there because he got to do what they say do, because he didn't do that, he had to suffer. And his cause was dead. Titus' family tells us he looked up to the two of the men arrested in the case and got drawn. But it will always be that place where, that place where an innocent 13-year-old girl was found dead, that place where an abandoned home became a poster for the ugly world of drugs, that place where nationwide will never forget. Siobhan Randall of Lancaster was held for ransom over $100,000 worth of stolen marijuana. That baby didn't deserve that. She went from missing to murder. She was innocent. And he took my baby. And we all felt it. And knowing that she died made me sad. Six people in total were charged, two sent to federal prison. Desmond Jones awaits his fate starting Monday charged with engaging in organized criminal activity. Michael Titus, a 19-year-old, was also found dead in the home. Since all this in 2017, the community has raised the alarm about gangs, about drugs, and the abandoned homes that attract them. That home was torn down later in 2017. A small victory. Some siding and overgrown grass remain. Closure. Because right now it's still open. It's still fresh like as it was as yesterday. But the family has not felt the full weight on the scales of justice. She's in heaven. She's in heaven. Their hope is starting Monday, the courtroom is that place where justice happens. In this case. That is a brown paper bag with red stains. They showed pictures from the crime scene, some of them so disturbing, prosecutors asked the family if they wanted to leave. Even seasoned investigators say they were disturbed by how 13-year-old Siobhan Randall, only in seventh grade,
was found. The smell and the level of decomposition was such that it absolutely took my breath away. Prosecutors say Desmond Jones is the man who helped kidnap Siobhan, drove her in this white Ford to the home in Oak Cliff where she was killed. How was it that Siobhan Randall was laying? She was laying uh, kind of on her stomach with her head turned to the side. Prosecutors showed the pictures of weapons, bullets, and other items found in several cars belonging to Jones and three other suspects. And experts talked about how they painstakingly processed the crime scene searching for bullet fragments. We used a sifting material with two people kind of sifting through and looking to see what we find. Defense lawyers criticized the investigation because some of the bullet fragments were found only after a second search of the home a month. Doug, this particular defendant is the first of four who will face these trials in connection to the death of that 13-year-old. Desmond Jones is his name. This is the second day of this trial, and today he faced a woman believed to be the first target of this violence. It's just like my little sister. Lodoris Randall is Siobhan Randall's older cousin. The 23-year-old knows the actions of her boyfriend, discussed in court today, initiated a criminal plot to abduct her. Instead, she told this jury in the case against Desmond Jones, Jones's partners in crime grabbed the 13-year-old Siobhan instead, then called her on the phone with a specific threat. And what were those threats? Um, we're going to kill her if you don't bring the drugs back. I'm sorry? We're going to kill her if, we don't, if you don't bring the drugs back, if he don't bring the drugs. Desmond Jones is accused of organized criminal activity that included the kidnapping and murder of Siobhan Randall. Prosecutors have claimed Jones was part of a crew desperate to get back more than 100 pounds of marijuana stolen from them. The ripoff shown in this surveillance video. Also in court today, Desmond Jones's girlfriend, her identity hidden, testifying about calling police after being told her car and her boyfriend were part of Siobhan's abduction. Why did you call the police on the 30th? That evening his sister called me and told me they stole that little girl in your car and I was like you lying and she was like no uh, you can look at it on the news and so I ended up googling it and I just looked at the description of the car they call themselves Siobhan Randall's army I'm going to show up every time. The teen's mother and family focused as they walked into federal court on Wednesday, preparing to face La Portia Polly. She's the first in a group of suspects to be sentenced, all linked to the 13-year-old's kidnapping and murder. I'm her voice. I'm her mama. Shaquana Persley's been waiting to face those accused since June 2017. Her daughter was kidnapped from a relative's home and held for ransom in a scheme involving drugs, robbery, and money. A judge sentenced Polly to four years in prison on federal gun charges. Investigators say she lied to a gun dealer in order to obtain two weapons for Darius Fields, another suspect in Siobhan's disappearance and death. But a man that you chose to be with chose to take my child away from me. You know, so it was it's crazy for her to, you know, just sit back and think we're supposed to take pity on her. Investigators say Polly was looking over marijuana when someone came to steal it. That triggered a domino effect of crime. In court, Polly represented herself. She talked about a history of abusive boyfriends, at one point saying, quote, I first want to apologize to you, Judge, my family, and my son for the shame and embarrassment I've caused. There were no direct... She apologized for her actions, but not to me, not to my situation, not to what I'm going through. She's, she's apologizing for selling drugs for choosing the wrong men. This past year and a half has been tough for Randall's loved ones. She was a good person. They expect it'll only get tougher as they prepare to see more of the... He says she was killed after she saw one of the suspect's faces. punishment phase then for Desmond Jones, but then was quickly interrupted. What 
you're hearing and what you're seeing here was in fact the second outburst and it would be the last while Jones's sister was on the stand in his defense. The first one happened when someone was leaving the courtroom earlier and then yelled. Uh, he ended up yelling something at him. Less than a half hour ago, the jury did sentence Jones to 99. It's hard. Her daughter was kidnapped and killed, and now for the first time, we are hearing from Siobhan Randall's mother. Thank you for joining us. First at six, Siobhan's family opened up today paying tribute to the teenage victim. But as News 8's Demond Fernandez shows us, their focus now is preventing other crimes. Demond? Well, Cynthia, behind me here on Keys, you can see a memorial continues to grow outside that vacant home where the bodies of Siobhan Randall and Michael Titus were found. The tragedy here triggered a unique meeting today. The focus was youth from across the city and putting an end to senseless violence. Lord, you brought us here together to show support for each other, but mainly to show support for this family. In a packed room, a large group gathers to remember and discuss. We don't want to lose one more. They're talking about ways to stop senseless violence days after the tragic death of 13-year-old Siobhan Randall. She lost her life over nothing, over pettiness. Community members here, young and old, are talking through how the Lancaster teen's kidnapping and murder over an alleged drug dispute she had nothing to do with is affecting so many. I felt, like, disappointed. Mm -hmm. I felt angry, lost, confused. Mm -hmm. This place was intended to be a safe space. And this is heavy, man. This is a heavy, heavy day. To focus on healing and solutions to a community problem. If you know someone who has been affected by violence, raise your hand. And keep your hands up, please. Nearly everyone in this room has been impacted by violence in some way. Yes. Jen and Ferrand and Pat Ford live in the Kessler Heights community where Siobhan's body was found in a vacant home. They'd like to see more resources for teens. We need something for these kids to do. As community organizers focus on addressing senseless violence, this circle of support is helping Siobhan's grieving family. I just want to say thank you for everything that everybody has done so far. And moving forward. Violence is not a part of my life. Violence is not a part of my life. Some here hope a pledge against violence will make the community stronger. The answer is up. 